I, honestly, you know, just look at this terrible. You know, there's orange peel. You know, we got dirt everywhere. It's just like, you know, look at the orange peel. You know, look at this. Uh, and a big fat run right there. Look at that. Look at that run. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, my God. It just, look at this. Runs, orange peel, dirt. It's everywhere. It's run, orange peel. It, you know, this isn't going to fly. It's just, no. This is, no, no. Look at that. Look at the dirt. All the dirt everywhere. It, look at the orange peel. <sighs> Guys, I'm only kidding. This thing looks excellent. Let's see how we got here. Um, there's just a few little things I gotta polish when I'm done. It'll, when I'm finished polishing everything out, it'll look absolutely stunning. We're gonna go ahead and prep this area underneath here, back here, and underneath there. Then I'll cover everything inside here. Make sure that it's all covered because if you don't, that little overspray will stick. There, I'm not worried about. I just wanted something on there to, if it's dull or whatever, I don't care. But the dash, of course, I'm going to cover all that and make sure that no overspray sticks to it. And if it does, I'll just buff it off and make sure it looks good. So anyway, that's what I'm going to. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> All right, and you guys thought you were coming in with me for the easy part? No, no, no. Well, you guys have got to do this part. This is all you, man. So let's check it out. That's after just the primer there. I want that set. I think I'm gonna let it set overnight because too late in the day. I'd... It's all right. It'll be fine. This primer, you can do that. So that's the part you're gonna see here. So up under there, it's all done too. Yeah, we'll have all that painting cleared. Phew, what a lot of work.
All right, that's after a few coats of color down here. I just shot it once slowly with the, if you uh, atomize it, you know, you keep your pressure kind of low, but you turn your volume way down and atomize it well enough. And you just go really nice and slow. It kind of dries as it goes on. And then that keeps it from getting fish eyes in it. Like if you put it on too thick, base right out of the you know if you just puddle it on with the big droplets it's gonna fish eye so you have to put it on even slow if you're gonna try and finish it in one coat like that but if you uh, you can put on layers or whatever it just depends on what you're trying to do but for underneath here I just did it that way so Let's put some clear on this thing All right, let's take a look here. Got a pretty smooth finish here. Of course, there's some pits and stuff where I didn't get them all out. I wasn't gonna try to do all that. And some yuckies from the primer. It was really hard to shoot all this with that um, thing there, but it, overall, it looks really good. So once the gas tank's in here and it's all done, it's dry to touch, still just slightly sticky. And I just shot, you know, one coat of clear underneath here you guys can see it better than me so it's all done this is like three coats of clear so it looks pretty smooth no orange peel really a little bit a little bit of orange peel in this don't want to don't want to go too heavy and have runs that's for sure and then under here of course it's all painted now so that was fun you guys enjoyed the first part where I took you guys underneath with me. Of course, I wasn't going to do that every coat. It's really hard to work under there, so I just got all that done. Yeah, and I, I, there's some holes here that I'm going to leave because they're just too hard to get in there to weld up. So it's like it's not going to really matter anyway. It's behind the brackets on the side, so eh, not going to worry about it. I thought about it for a little while and I went, you know, it's just too hard to get in there. I can't grind it, even if I got it. So, nah, can't see it once the engine's in here. Anyway, so it's looking pretty good. All this stuff is coated. It's dry to touch, just barely, but not uh, hard yet. So, let it sit out here in the sun for all day and move on to the next thing to paint. Well, this is the fun part. Sanding out all this stuff by hand, a lot of it. I guess I'll use the DA first. I just run over it by hand after, but some of this stuff you really can't. Gotta get it smooth. Or it'll show up. All right, that's what we're doing.
This part sucks. Go like that. And go like this here. Yeah. There. Well, I got one done. All that time. I did all these ones already. There we go. There goes two. Got all those to do. All right, so I haven't had much time to film this because uh, I got so much time. But that this is is um, something called uh, transfer tape or pre mask. Comes in a roll. You can, the smaller ones are a little easier to manage, but this one was kind of old, and I wanted to use it before it got too bad. So you just pull off a bit of this, and it's like blue tape. But, you know, what, two feet wide? Then I just put it all over everything in here. Because even if I cover all this, there's always going to be blow through. So either I'll paper everything and double paper it. I'll put paper over that and then put, you know, whatever. I'm going to put, I'm going to cover this whole area. So all that's all covered, double covered. Because if you don't, you get a little tiny leak in there and a little bit of overspray goes in there and it just lands on everything and makes it all look flat. So I just decided to do all this back here too. In the dash. Of course, I don't want to get that all flat. It takes a bit of time. I was using some old stuff so it was I couldn't really film it. It was it was all coming off. So I got all this all covered up. Now still I'm gonna still cover this whole area again. But I put this on there because even if you put paper on there, it you know if it has a void behind it, sometimes the the mist will get going. It'll just go up under the paper and wipe it all out. So better just to be safe. Use this stuff works for good. This gets you know they have this at Sign Supply. You can get it at uh, either the Sign Supply places online, whatever. You can just order a roll of it. Like a 15 inch roll would probably be more appropriate. This, this, whatever it is, 24 inch is just too big, really. All right, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna get ready to paint this sucker. I set up the spray booth, all that stuff. So, a lot of work to do. Right, since I got this set up, I was going to go ahead and promote for these guys again because this Warsan paint booth is actually really good. Um, my other one was good. It worked fine. This one's about two feet wider, which 
really makes a difference, especially when you've got this rack, okay? So, and the other thing I like about it is it only takes one fan to air it up. I'm not even gonna use this one. This one's for airflow. I'm not really worried about that today. There's your one fan right there. It airs up in like, I'd say it was less than five minutes. It was seemed like almost immediate, so I don't really know. I didn't time it, but man, it could have been a, a minute to air this thing up. And it's solid once it's up. I just put weights in the corners. You know, in a higher wind situation, I definitely would want to tie it down. It's really cool because it has these filters on the side. These are carbon filters. So you could put a, they have a outward ventilation system where you can put it inside a building. Um, and it's cheaper than the other one I bought. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, these things are really nice. If you don't want to have a garage, you can put all the plastic you want up all over all your items in the garage if you're going to paint at home or whatever and when that dust gets that mist gets up going it can even go underneath those things and still wipe out everything underneath unless you have every single little tiny hole filled and you probably won't plus you're going to get that smell in your house and if it's attached to your house or something have one of these things is just great and then all your overspray and all that that lands just stays in here it's just way better than spraying in a outside or spraying under a carport or something like that or in a garage so great alternative plus if you wanted to put this inside a big commercial building it does have a ventilation system you can hook up to the side of it uh, i don't really exactly have room for it you saw the carmen Ghia sitting there so I, I barely even have room to air this thing up right now so and there was wind earlier i was going to show you guys that but it stopped and it just kind of sways a little bit. As long as you got the weights down, really should, again, tie it down if you think you're going to have a gust of anything more than like 15 miles an hour. Because you could have a, what will happen is the bottom edge will go in and then it'll collapse. But it normally won't. It usually stays up just fine like this. All right, you can see the wind. 
is blowing a little bit. This thing's not really moving much, so it's a little scary, but it's all right. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I don't know how many coats of base. I just keep shooting it. Like three of them base color, then I'll go over it with like uh, three or four of the other, and I just do a keep going until it's even. So I do like a, I don't know, I did like four or five drop coats on it. Three, I just kept going until it looks as even as I can get it. I just keep shooting it on and uh, put on real, real dry coats from far away with it real thin slow reducer and just shoot it on as even as you can that's how you get metallics to look even now I still don't know if I'm gonna get a perfect roof but ah, I don't think I'm gonna worry about that sides are pretty good definitely pretty even on the sides this color is super hard it's like some of the silvers that you spray that just don't ever even out it's one of those so it should look good though it's just the way it is it's a tough one All right, let's walk around it once. This is the first coat of clear. That's how smooth I spray it. I like to get it, use the Tamco clear. You gotta get that first coat pretty nice, otherwise. I only wanna put two on. The more I put on it, the more dirt I get in it. Of course, unless there's more peel on this. And these are what I'm worried about right here. Get that off of there. And then I got one back here. The typical oval window run spot. Right there. I was trying to shoot that round window. Just wobble a little bit with your wrist and get a little too close somewhere and you got it hanging on you. Anyway, that's one coat. This is pretty much dry other than these little spots here. I'm gonna try to take a piece of tape and get those off of there because this color, if it if it's got a little sag like that and you go to touch it or you go to puff it, you'll see it. It's it's a terrible color.
And if you can see that, it blew to where it started to kink a little bit. And I was like, eh, that could be a problem. The gust probably hit 20 miles an hour, so I just pulled it inside. You can look at this run right here. It almost took it all the way out, the second coat. It just because I took a little bit of tape and pulled the heaviness off. This one's a little tiny bit one. Kind of got, was there one going on over here? I think there was. I don't know, a couple of them. And I was able to flow them out into the next coat because I knocked the heads off. And the ones that are under here, who cares? Um, so yeah, it turned out really good. There's almost no orange peel in most of it. A little bit of course in the sides. So you're going to get a little bit on the sides because if you try and put it on as heavy as you do on the roof, it'll... It'll come down on you. See, I've got a little edgy one right there, but that's nothing. It's normal to get some, something. For me, at least. I don't know. Some guys, well, if you're in a spray booth and you're spraying every day, and you, you know, and, and that's all you do is paint all day long, next one car, and you prep one, paint it, and you do like six a day. You can do it without getting any orange peel and runs. I mean, some guys are really can get because you got the spray booth. You can turn the pressure up all the way on the gun. You can get a better gun than what I'm using. I use the Harbor Freight Spectrum. Should have used my Techno Pro Light, but I didn't really want to use it for for this. It wouldn't really make much difference. Um, on a bus, I'll always use that because you really need the for the really flat panels on the bus. You. You're going to get some orange peel if you don't. Might get something you can't sand out. Yeah, and these nice big heavy fatties right there. Look at that. That's going to stay right there. That's just going to stay there. They were there in the factory. So, yeah. I tried to go underneath them and kind of flow them out a little bit. If they, if they fall down, that's great. If they keep making a big fatty... They'll be there forever. I will leave them. I do not care. Underneath there, I just want to paint it for protection. That's it. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, see your comments. Talk to you next one.